Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us, and we'll go from there. Hi, my name is Louis Maurer. I'm the general manager at Bear Creek Winery, which is located in Homer, Alaska. We are a country winery, so we do primarily fruit wines, and we also do fruit grape wine blends. Uh, you can find us at bearcreekwinery.com. It's so funny the way one person leads to another person. I forget what that rule is called. But I learned of Bear Creek Winery. Bear Creek Winery is, let me see, let me get the exa- in Homer, Alaska. From, of all people, Jean-Pierre Go. Jean-Pierre Go, as you recall, we've talked to Jean-Pierre probably a couple times over the years. He is he creates vintage wine posters, and he's based out of Bordeaux, actually, and he has several clients in the United States. He comes to the United States a couple times a year. But he was commissioned to create a poster for Bear Creek Winery, and he provided in the link, along with the picture of his poster creation to Bear Creek Winery. And I started looking at this and I thought, oh my heaven, I've never interviewed anybody from Alaska before. And Bear Creek Winery includes lodging. And the wine selection is very, very, very unique. And so we have with us today, Louis Mauer, who, Mauer, who is the general manager. His, his uh, in-laws basically founded the winery. And, Louis, did I say that right again? It's Maurer, right? Maurer, that's correct, Maurer. yeah. Maurer, okay. Okay, so, Louis, what were you doing were, before you married into this family? Were you I- involved in the wine industry in some way in another state? Or, I mean, tell us the story. We want to hear all about it. Uh, only on a hobbyist level was I involved in the wine. I started beer and brew, uh, brewing beer and then shifted into making wine. Um, but before I got to know Jasmine, Bill and Dorothy's daughter, uh, I was, we met at school, I was doing engineering, and that's what I did. Um, I was uh, working for an engineering firm in California for about three years before moving up here to join in uh, with their business, which they had grown to a point that they definitely needed the extra help. Wow. Are, are you b- originally from California? No, I grew up in Oregon. We went to school, Jasmine and I went to school at Oregon State and met there, and she's a marine biologist. Um, so we went down to California. She did some graduate work down there uh, while I was doing, while I was working. And what what discipline in engineering did you study? Uh, I studied mechanical engineering, and I was working for a uh, medical device contract company down in Santa Cruz. Well, I would imagine you use a lot of medical engineering know-how working at a winery now. There's definitely crossover, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's obviously all the equipment that we use. There's pumps, uh, all the tanks, the stainless tanks, 
and we end up um, using sensors for various things. And so there is certainly some crossover. I remember one, only one time in my life did I actually work at a winery, and I have this etched in my mind, this horrible, horrible ex- uh, experience I had where I was trying to change off the... Um, the oh the the fitting at the end I was trying to change off a a hose on the bottom of a very big tank full filled with petite Syrah. and I and I did it wrong and so this whole huge tank of petite Syrah started emptying out oh all over me yeah and, that's not fun oh my god and so, you know it's I just when it's mechanical I just can't, I'm just I'm stupid I can't do it. <laughs> Is that one of those situations where you're trying to, like, put your hand over the hole or something? Yes, I did that. Yes, I did that. (laughs) Yeah. And then you realize how much real force there is there because there's so much wine in the tank. Oh, and then I was thinking of of how much money I was losing. with It was just horrible. I have spilt tanks, um, but luckily enough, it's only been... Uh, in the really early stages of the process, I mean, I haven't even pitched the yeast yet, and it's and they've only been small batches. So, uh, at least all of the to- the ferment- fermenting and racking and filtering time hadn't gone into the. It wasn't actually wine yet; it was juice. So there was still effort put into it, but yeah. it was so at a relatively uh, less involved stage. But it's not fun, no matter when when it is. Oh, man. So talk to us about this phenomenally unique wine list that is offered at Bear Creek. And I'm talking not just grapes, but a lot of Alaskan fruit. Yeah, well, I'll tell you a little bit how we started. Um, So Bill and Dorothy, they've lived up here for a little over 30 years now. They also moved up here from California. And Bill just, he tasted, they were over at dinner at a friend's house and they had a buddy that was making rhubarb wine, of yeah, all things, yeah. not even technically a fruit. And um, he tasted that, and just he was hooked. He's like, oh, this is amazing. You made this yourself. Oh, my gosh, I, I, you know, I've got to do this. I've got to learn how to do it. And so he went home and you know, that very same week started figuring out how to make his own creations. And uh, it just kind of grew from there. He got kicked out of the kitchen pretty quick, <laughs> making too much of a mess. You know, Dorothy's like, I don't think so. You need to be out in the garage. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he would ferment anything he got his hands on. Um, Jasmine always tells me this story about how, uh, you know, he was using rhubarb and he'd use, like, raspberries and things. And um they have a fruit bowl, like most people do in their kitchen, and they had some kiwis that had gotten forgotten about in the bottom of the um, fruit bowl, and they were basically fermenting. They were, you know, yes. molding and fermenting, yes. and and they found them, and it, 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 they kind of, when they were so soft, it kind of broke open, and it was bubbling, and it was, you know, he's like, oh my gosh, I can make wine out of that. And oh. So he immediately went down to the store and bought some kiwis, and, you know, he just always loves experimenting, so. Wow. Um, he just grew from raspberries and or from rhubarb, and then one of his first wines he made after that was raspberry wine, and so anything he could find locally, he tried mm-hmm. making wine out of. Mm-hmm. And so originally, um, we were strictly a country winery, doing just fruits and berries, and uh, eventually he grew. He started. He's like, well, I could try blending these with grape wines. And um, and Dorothy had a lot. She was involved in that a lot too. You know, she likes tasting wines and playing around with them. And so they started. They'd buy juice and ferment the juice for like uh, Syrah grape, and then they would blend that with various fruits. And what they found to be a really good combination was raspberry wine with Syrahs. And so we have a creation that's the Shiraz uh, Shirazberry mm-hmm. wine. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, about a 50-50 blend of raspberry wine and sh- and Shiraz. And wine. it's dry. It's a dry wine. Yeah, it is. The Shirazberry is a drier wine. Wine. Can, talk to us about this Alaskan Chardonnay. So there is somebody up there that's growing Chardonnay. Uh, no, there's nobody. I don't know of anybody in Alaska that's successfully growing grapes, unless it's in a greenhouse on a very small scale. Okay. And so we um, basically get our juice from a wholesaler out of Canada. Oh, wow. And, yeah, okay. we have it shipped up. And, uh, and then once we, get the, once we get the juice, then we go and take it from there. But 
Okay, but now how about like the raspberry, the gooseberry, uh-huh. the blueberry, the currant, um, or, or the strawberry, are the fruits from Alaska? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, last year we went through about 8,000 pounds of rhubarb. Um, we grew roughly 1,000 of that ourselves. Um, we do a golden uh, raspberry wine, so it's instead of a red raspberry, wow. it's kind of a yellow golden, yeah. Oh, wow. Which is super fun, because just like in grapes, there are different varieties of blueberries, there's different varieties of raspberries, yeah. um, and they will impart subtle differences in the wine. So the red raspberry, or the golden raspberry wine, is uh, it's a, it tastes a little bit drier, and it's different than, it's got a little more acid in it than the red raspberry wine. Wow. That is um, so cool. I bet that's gorgeous to look at in the glass. Yep. Yeah. And then the coloring, of course. Yeah. So it's it's really fun in that. I mean, there's a whole other realm out there to explore. Um, grapes really are ideally suited for making wine. They've got all of the nutrients in the skins that the yeast need, and they have uh, the tannins for aging, and they've got all these elements, and that's why traditionally grapes have been used. But you can use other fruits, um, and you just kind of have to watch it a little closer. And um, if the yeast is struggling a little bit, you might need to add a little bit of nutrients and that kind of thing. So you have to be, uh, you really have to be uh, wear your scientist hat, your microbiology right. and nutrition yeah. hat. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And that's part of the fun part. I mean, I love making wine uh, for a lot of the same reasons that I think Bill does. Uh, once you get a product that's good in the end and people love it, that's really satisfying, and we like making people happy. And um, also, it's even though I'm a very methodical, you know, I have this engineering side to me, um, making wine is still an art to, yes. uh, you know, half of it is still art. And uh, so that's really fun. I mean, there's nothing, there's no better instrument than your palate, than your tongue. Um, you know, you can take measurements all day long and they definitely help, but just tasting it and going from there is the best way that we've found to do it, to um, kind of shape a good wine. Louis, talk to us before we go to a break here about the fact that you, you, you get recognition. I mean, you, people are saying, yes, you're doing this well. You submit your wines to competitions like the Finger Lakes International Wine Competition, and you received, what, uh, three medals for this, this year. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. We got a silver medal for our rhubarb wine this year, and we've gotten a gold medal last year for our strawberry wine. And I see you received a bronze for the raspberry wine this year and a bronze mm-hmm. for the Alaskan apple wine. And, it, you know, is the Alaskan apple wine actually apple or is it is it because I see you guys call it the rhubarb is apple? Uh, yeah, and that's just kind of a nomenclature thing because it's got apple notes and it grows so well up here like apples do yeah. down in Washington. That's so. what I thought. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to go to a short break here. When we come back, could we please talk about... Uh, the fact that you have these wonderful accommodations that people can come stay at and you ship wines as well. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to go to a short break here. When we come back, we're going to continue with Louis Maurer, the general manager of Bear Creek Winery in Homer, Alaska. Can you believe it? Homer, Alaska. And they ship to many, many states. So now you have some fantastic new ideas of wines, fruit wines to get people on Wine and Dine. Okay. We are back and we're continuing our conversation with Louis Maurer of Bear Creek Winery. The website is bearcreekwinery.com. I should say Bear Creek Winery and Lodging. So you can go and taste wines there. You can spend the night there. And even in the winter, October 1st through April 30th. And, you know, I grew up Louis in Cleveland, Ohio, on the east side, in the snow belt uh-huh. with all the lake effect snow, and I haven't lived in a snow region for uh, 25 years. And I actually 
miss it immensely, the excitement <laughs> of the snow. But uh, what kind of weather do you guys get? Do, when people come up to stay in the winter, are they going hunting or snowing or cross-country skiing? What, what are people doing? Uh, skiing is one of, definitely one of the biggest activities to do outside and dog sledding. <gasps> really? Absolutely. The Iditarod, of course, um, and in in many of the uh, towns around Alaska, you can, there are people that will, you can go and, and, you know, do a dog sled tour, basically. And uh, I've done it before. It's super fun. It's one of the most enjoyable ways to move through the wilderness during the winter because um, all you hear, it's just quiet. It's just really quiet. It's not like being on a snow machine. And uh, so it's really pleasant in that regard. How many years have you lived up in Homer, Alaska? Uh, personally, all year round, only two years. <gasps> oh, so you were cheating. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, I growing up in Oregon, obviously I was down there, <laughs> and then uh, back and forth for years after Jasmine and I met for Christmas and for uh, visiting during summer and that kind of thing. Um, okay. But the full-time year round has just been uh, two years. And is it, is it like culture shock? I really enjoy the snow myself. Uh, I went to school at Montana State for a year just oh. because I wanted to ski. Um, I spent a, a winter in Utah skiing, and so I really like the snow. And um, it, it doesn't – I'm used to a little bit of a warmer summer. Uh, the Oregon gets those nice 90-degree days, you know, to grow all that fruit and grow everything down there. Um, so I, I would be nice if it got a little bit warmer in the summer, but I'm, it's, it's working for me. I'm, it's – now, when you Still say good. a little, what, how warm does it get in the summer on average? Is it like a 70-degree day Fahrenheit? <laughs> the, this is a funny statistic that I, I always uh, pull out, and that is that the warmest day on record in Homer ever was 76 degrees. Whoa! And it's different up here. It's hard, unless, it's hard to really understand it until you experience it. When it gets up to like 65 here in Homer, that feels more like 75 or 80. Well, you're farther north in latitude, so you're exactly. closer to the sun. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so a, a normal day is like 60 um, in the summer, which is warmer than it sounds. Is it? Can you wear a T-shirt outside, or do you always have to have a sweatshirt on? You, you can. You can wear a T-shirt and shorts, um, and it really depends on whether the wind's blowing or not. Yeah. Homer is located right on Ketchumac Bay, and so um, there's always a cool breeze coming off the coast. And uh, it can, if it's blowing, you know, pretty good that day, then you, it's going to be, it's going to feel a little chillier. Ketchumac Bay. I was going to ask you about that. So you have a, access to some incredibly fresh fish, I would think. Yes. Yeah. Halibut and salmon. Um, almost, you can fish halibut year round, and uh, if you go out for king winter salmon, you can fish salmon all year round too. How about crab? There is crab in the inlet. There used to be king crab. Bill and Dorothy have these amazing stories of just throwing pots right off of the the docks down on the spit and uh, catching crab and shrimp. And you got to go out a little further to do that anymore, but um, hopefully it'll come back. So they'll, they'll they'll make a comeback. <laughs> So if people stay, if they uh, lodge at Bear Creek Winery and Lodging, is there, where do people go eat? Uh, there's a number of nice eateries in town. Uh, it depends on if it's winter or summer, everything on the spit. This, I should probably explain the spit. The spit is, uh, it's a gravel bar, basically, that sticks out from the mainland um, three miles. Okay. And so there's, you know, there's the mainland and the bay, and then there's just this spit of this this finger of land that sticks out into the bay. Okay. And uh, that's where the harbor is, and all the fishing fleet goes out of, and there's a whole little um, community of gift shops, and there's a couple eateries out there and one or two places to stay. So uh, in the summer, there's some fantastic places to get. You know, they, they will literally, if you go out fishing on a charter, you can bring your fish in, and they will cook your fish for you out there. Where do people fly into to get to Bear Creek Winery and Lodging? Um, you, you have to come into Anchorage, and then you can either drive down from Anchorage, which is about four hours south on the Kenai Peninsula, or you can fly into the Homer Airport. Oh, really? Yeah, which is only uh, about a 20-minute flight out of Anchorage. Oh, okay. 
And well, like where I live, people have to take commuter flights to to from it, Charlotte area out to the coast where I'm at. So talk to us about the the lodging and the different of the different setups that you have here for you know yeah. for rooms and suites. So we have kind of a boutique lodge going on, and it's geared towards the kind of the romantic getaway. Um, in the winter, we have the our primary customer is uh, the peop- uh, peop- local people looking to just kind of escape, um, you know, their home. That's all they yeah. get cabin fever, you know. Yeah. And uh, so they'll come down. It's usually couples, and we've got a seven foot cedar hot tub. Um, there's grills on the deck, and there's a little kitchenette inside, and. Uh, uh, everything is there's their themed rooms so one's an arctic and one's a cowboy room and so there's like the arctic rooms blue and it's got blue glass in the shower and um we do robes for people monogram robes and complimentary bottle of wine in the rooms along with uh some truffles that are made by wildberry which is a local uh, company that also buys local alaskan berries and makes okay. uh truffles and candies oh, wow. out of them do, do you the the let me see the summer weekly rate how many people can like can a family of four stay together in a in a suite or is it not not really it's not really what we're set up for um, okay the, the suites are a little smaller than that and we have the cowboy can accommodate three people there's a okay. queen bed and then a pull out um, for three people and so that's why I say it's usually couples kind of looking to okay. uh, Okay. For that, for that, we have a lot of like honeymooners stay here, and people that are celebrating anniversaries or birthdays and that kind of thing. Okay, so talk to us about the the fact that you ship. You, and I have a list of one of the states I I printed it off from the website, but there uh-huh. are, you don't ship to North Carolina where I'm at, but there are many many other states you do ship to. Yeah, so we uh, there's a third party shipper that we use uh, called it's VenoShipper dot com, and they uh, basically have a web page that you can go to and order our wines on, and they go, I think it's about 15 states that they ship to outside of Alaska. Okay, so talk to us about some p- pricing so so people can get some kind of a bearing. Like if I wanted to, and I don't see it on here, it, if it, unless it's just raspberry wine versus black raspberry wine, what's mm-hmm. the price on the yellow raspberry wine? Uh, yeah, that's all on there because we never, we're, those are all estate grown berries, and we never know how much we're going to get. Okay. Um, okay. And we don't distribute it. So we have a number of, uh, we pretty much call them seasonal wines okay. that we have at the winery here. Um, Alaskan apples, just barely regular enough to put it on the regular wine list. But if you actually manage to make it to the tasting room, we always have at least one wine that's probably not going to be on the list that we've where they're experimenting with or okay. um you know that we happen to have the fruit for or whatever so so people listening to this in uh let's say the east coast if they're just absolutely dying to get a bottle of the yellow raspberry they have to get on a plane and go over there <laughs> yeah that would be, that that would be the funnest way right yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> um and you know they can always call and uh you know, let us know what they're looking for. If they okay. usually people don't even know about it unless they're here. Yeah. Um, so it'd be p- pretty cool to get a call from New York uh, from somebody asking for our golden raspberry wine. And I want to say also that there is a pomegranate wine for anybody who's looking for something like that for the holiday season. Well, Louis Mara, this has been so much fun and such a pleasure meeting you today. And I, we th- all thank you so very much for taking the time to talk to us. No problem. Yeah, I hope we can do it again. I feel like we barely scratched the surface. <laughs> well, you know what? We I really didn't even get a chance to really ask you about the Alaskan grape growing and wine industry. So maybe we could do this again the beginning of 2012. Sure. Well, we will have links up for you to learn more, and I thank you for listening to Wine and Dine. Wonders of modern technology on the phone with Homer Alaska. Blow my mind. I would like to try that raspberry wine. Or, yeah, just to see what it's like. Mm mm mm. Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio.
iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory, and it's listed alphabetically. Click on that, and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com, where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there.